Hello everyone, Antonio here. Welcome back to this uh, brief summary of chapter 3 where we will be talking about the Z-transform and its applications. How you can use the Z-transform to analyze uh, uh, properties uh, of systems like stability which we have seen in connection with the Fourier transform and also um, causality. So if you remember, uh, given a sequence X of N, we applied, then in the previous video, we applied the Fourier transform to it to get uh, another sequence, which is a, a function of a complex exponential e to the j omega. And uh, the general formula then that we used, which is uh, known as the Fourier transform, is... Uh, described by this equation here that uh, is very similar to what you'd have for the z-transform that we will see in a moment but there's one thing that I would like to mention to you here uh, which is when we take the absolute value of the of the Fourier transform so this part here this factor here that uh, you know it's e to the j minus j omega n is uh, what happens uh, in the unit circle. So I'll shift a little bit just to show this to you. So if we have e to the j omega, so this is a fixed value, but if we add when, uh, n here, so it would be a rotating, which means varying with n. But the point is that uh, the length or the absolute value is 1, you see. So if we go back, when you see here that we are taking the absolute value of this Fourier transform here. So this is 1. So we actually then will be adding the infinite sum of the absolute values of this sequence. And this uh, means that uh, if a uh, sequence has a Fourier transform, we can say that then th that sequence will be absolutely summable. Uh, in other words, that mean also means that... Um, that sequence or system would be stable okay so the Fourier transform can be related to uh, the analysis of stability for sequences in general and uh, whenever we say sequence we also mean that it can be a, a sequence uh, a, a signal or a, a system now uh, what we will do now is uh, extend this uh, result of the Fourier transform to a situation where we are applying it uh, as of calculating uh, the sum as a function of z where z is to be defined as a uh, r to the e to the j omega r times e to the j omega this basically means that uh, now instead of being uh, constrained to be on the unit circle we are now evaluating what happens in the whole z plane. Okay, we can be inside the unit circle, outside, even on the unit circle itself. This will allow us um, to now combine the analysis of stability and causality with one transformation, which is the z transform that you can see here. Okay. So, um, I think it's better to just jump straight to an example that we will see here. This example 3 1, uh, where we will apply the Z transform to this sequence. It's a um, right sided sequence because, you see, when we are multiplying it with, by U of n, U of n is a uh, unit step that starts at zero and moves towards infinity. And then we know where the sequence starts, but we don't know where it ends. As well, it will end at infinity, of course. Uh, so it's a right side comp uh, complex exponential uh, sequence. When we apply the Z-transform to this sequence, okay, we just plug it in here. We change the limits accordingly because now we know that we are starting at zero and at infinity. Just disregard that one. Uh, so now we can rewrite uh, uh, this as a single uh, power, the base is a times uh, z to the minus 1, 
and we apply this relationship here that we learned from before and uh, so it's the uh, base raised to the lower limit which is in this case is zero so this raised to the power of zero is one and raised to the power of infinity plus one which is infinity divided by one minus a which is then a is this uh, product here a times z to the minus one and what we need is that uh, this term here we have to find a way to make sense of it because uh, we cannot have it as infinity so the only way to f accomplish that is if we take this uh, product here and assume that uh, it, that number in absolute value must be less than one when that's the case if you write, raise a number which is less than one to the power of infinity you get zero so the condition for this uh, sum here to converge is that this product in absolute value must be less than one in other words so we have a actually a divided by z here which means that uh, for that to be less than one absolute value of z must be greater than absolute value of a and finally we end up with this uh, result here so this is the z transform but which is um, related to the condition that we are imposing here. So that Z transform exists only if this condition is imposed. Okay, now let's see how this looks in the Z plane. So uh, we have, we are just make try, trying to make sense what this condition means so we put a somewhere and we say that we are interested you know, it's not this is not the figure this this is the right one um, so we are interested in values of a uh, or values of z that are greater than a okay now here we will see something very interesting. So we saw previously from the sequence that it was uh, a right-sided sequence, okay? But in the z-plane that we are analyzing now, a right-sided sequence will have a region of conversion that is expanding outwards from the outermost uh, pole. This uh, concept of pole, we are introducing it now but we will uh, deepen it a little bit more in chapter um, in chapter uh, five okay so now what we see is the following uh, that uh, um, this region of convergence by placing a inside the unit circle means that the region of convergence also includes the unit circle in that case we can say that uh, that the solution also inclu uh, includes the Fourier transform that's the meaning and for because of that then we will say that this sequence is causal because that was the the where we started from it was a right-sided sequence that started at uh, started at um, at zero and moved to the right so it was a causal uh, sequence it didn't have negative samples that was the meaning and it results in a uh, region of convergence which is expanding outwards from some value a in absolute value okay so it was causal but because in this case the way we where we placed a also gave us a situation where we can also conclude that the sequence is also stable because it uh, has a Fourier transform However, if we had a outside unit circle, so this is the unit circle, and we have a here, we would have a situation that the region of convergence that we would have now would not include the unit circle. So the sequence would be stable, but not, uh, oh, sorry, the sequence would be causal, but not stable because the region of convergence in this case doesn't include the unit circle which means that the Fourier transform does not exist for that uh, case 
and also which means that the uh, sequence would not be absolutely summable that's the conclusion on the opposite uh, case uh, when we have a sequence which is left-sided that means that uh, if you analyze here we see that uh, this sequence is now defined from um, minus one but it moves to the left because it uh, it's only defined for values of n less than or equal to minus one all right and we just apply the Fourier transform to it uh, the z transform to it and see what what we get now we have to simplify the limits according to the what we see here and uh, this means that we go from uh, from a minus infinity because it says less than or equal to minus one so we get, go from minus infinity to minus one okay so what we can do is because we have solved a problem previously which is uh, we know more or less how to solve which is this case here so we'll try to have the limits in this fashion uh, from zero to infinity because we know already how to solve this one okay so now what we can do is um, from here so we are starting from one we first make these limits positive if we change the sign here then we have to change here as well so this is exactly what happens in this step here but now what you see is that uh, to make it exactly like the previous one from zero to infinity we have to uh, do one more change here which is change the limit it was starting at one to infinity now we start at zero that means that we have included one more element here because now we have included the element which is this base here raised to the power of zero which is one so we have included because of this sign here actually we have then included a minus one to compensate for that to cancel it cancel it out we include a plus one here right? so it's the same thing now we have one minus now we are solving this because no way right how it goes is the raised to the power of the the first limit the lower limit which is zero it gives us one minus raised to the power of the upper limit plus one which is case is infinity and one minus the base uh, the base of the power there now we continue to simplify here but we need to get rid of this infinity here as well but then we have to say that this must be a fraction what that means is uh, that means is the in absolute value this must be less than one that means it must uh, be between zero and one and when we raise it to the power of infinity it will uh, go to zero so that's what we want and if you analyze this that means z divided by a okay in absolute value which means if we want this to be less than one so the the denominator here must be greater than the numerator or the opposite the denominator must be less than the denominator that's the final condition that we will work with that is also called the region of conversions okay uh, so that's the the region of conversions but now what we can do is to simplify this uh, result here and uh, so we will cancel the ones here and we get uh, to this part here first okay to get there but now we analyzing the the ones and uh, the zeros and poles it's better to have it like uh, in a similar uh, condition uh, uh, fashion as before but what, what i can do is the following i can uh, multi simplify it by multiplying it by the the reciprocal of this term here so we have instead of a to the minus one i have a and z to the minus one it's a negative sign and this goes to one 
and then down here I will uh, if I move I have to multiply, multiply up and down when I do the multiplication here this goes to 1 which I put here and then I have minus because this multiplies by 1 it gives this minus a to uh, z to the minus 1 and uh, with this region of conversions here okay so this simplification we get to this one in this case here but if we pay attention we see that this is exactly the same result that we obtained before here uh, the only difference is that the region of convergence are the opposite of each other so one is right-sided greater than and the other one is left-sided less than so uh, now if we if we then uh, analyze this in terms of uh, the, the, in the z-plane what we have is that uh, if we place a at some point I will put this on top like this so this is the condition that uh, the final result for the, the z transform and the condition is that it's left sided and then uh, we placed a here so it, uh, we are interested in the absolute values for the region of conversions absolute values of z that are less than absolute value of a so we go inwards these are the numbers that have an absolute value less than absolute value of a well with a placed at that position first we know that this is a not uh, this is non uh, not causal because it came from the beginning from a, uh, a left-sided sequence with uh, negative values, right? We can see it from here, minus infinity to 1, not causal. But uh, that will result in a sequence with a uh, region of conversion that goes inwards, moves inwards from the, this pole here. And also in this case, because we placed A inside the unit circle, it will be not stable because the region of conversions, this region here, does not include the unit circle. So this is not a stable situation. I could, uh, we could have a different example where we could have this case here. If I now place A here, uh, knowing that the region of convergence is this one here absolute value of z less than absolute value of a and then we go inwards from this uh, region here okay we move inwards so the region of convergence is all this and here we see that uh, this region of conversions would include the unit circle. So in this case, if we compare what we had before here, not causal because it goes inwards, not stable because it doesn't include the unit circle. Here it will continue to be not causal because it still goes in, go in uh, goes inwards. But now it's stable because it includes the unit circle. Okay. So this is the kind of analysis that we do with the Z transform. Remember the five properties: memory less, linear and time invariant that we took for granted to develop the convolution and also connect with the Fourier transform. And then we expand the Fourier transform to the Z transform. And now we are analyzing the two last properties, which are uh, stability and uh, causality using the Z-transform, which, which in itself contains the Fourier transform, right? 
Now, we look at one example, which is called a two-sided sequence, where we are combining a, a right-sided sequence here with a left-sided sequence. And because we know already these results, we don't have to calculate them explicitly again. We just go to the table, it's table uh, 3, 1. And we look at the, the results from the table. And we arrive at this following uh, transforms here. With the associate region of convergence. So this one is right-sided, this one is left-sided. This is not, this is just greater than, okay? And it means, so we go greater than one third and less than one half. So the region of convergence will be uh, constrained like this, uh, in this range. The absolute value of Z will be in this range from one third to one uh, half. And these two uh, results here are the, uh, the ones that we read from the table when we go and check what would be the transforms for... Uh, that is it transforms for these two sequences here okay one right sided and one left sided so we have a combination of two sequences and then uh, if you want you can pause here and analyze what you see here but you have also this in your textbook so analyze uh, these two conditions and what we do is uh, sometimes we want to express our uh, transforms as a fun function of z to the minus 1. This is very useful when we go and implement systems as we will see later on. But sometimes for analysis purposes uh, we want to look at these poles and zeros. So it's more convenient to have them as a function of z rather than a function of z to the minus 1 as you can see here. So this is easier to analyze uh, and to find the, pl the poles and zeros. So the zeros will be the roots of this polynomial here. I see clearly that I have a zero at z equals zero. I have uh, numbered them here. Two zeros, one at z equals zero, and uh, one at z equals one divided by 12, one twelfth and uh, two poles one at z equals minus one third and the other one at z equals one half okay so now i put them here and uh, so i'm concerned to find the region of course we are concerned with the poles location of the poles that we denote here by uh, cross on x okay and the zeros are uh, with these two uh, small circles there so now I have placed them uh, correctly and uh, I have defined these two boundaries uh, one for one third because this is a double region of convergency so we have to figure out how to finally express it it says that it's greater than one third so it goes outwards from one third but it's also less than one half so it goes inwards from one half one half is here, one third here, outwards from one third, inwards from one half. And we end up with this ring. So this is uh, when you have a combination of two sequences, one right-sided and one left-sided, you end up with this uh, region of convergence in this form of a ring, okay? One thing here is that, uh, so we have finalized the analysis of uh, sequences uh, and this all these uh, examples, these three examples that we have seen, they are a combination of sequences which are actually of uh, infinite uh, length, okay? Uh, so, um, this is a class of uh, sequences which are when we have infinite length and we will see later on that they are they belong to a class of uh, filters that we call IIR filters infinite impulse response fi uh, filters because if we go back as I said so it's very uh, we don't distinguish signals from uh, from uh, systems okay if I replace this by H since we are calling H uh, system so then we would have a system with infinite uh, length and then uh, 
and therefore the impulse response will be called an inflate impulse response uh, sequence or systems well uh, on the other end we have the those sequences which have a finite length okay uh, finite length sequences that uh, which will be called uh, if in the case of systems finite impulse response systems okay this will be analyzed later on from chapter 5 to chapter uh, and also a little bit on chapter 7 but i will provide you with a summary and as i said before the core chapters those that uh, contain more uh, information that you need for now are chapters 2 3 and 5 we are diving some of these things are all also described in chapter 5 now to finish we can take a quick look at a sequence which is uh, a finite length sequence okay this finite length sequence so if we replace h by uh, a uh, x by h then we would have a system which would be an fir system finite impulse response because when you plug uh, H instead of X, so we are using X for signals, input signals. But if you use H instead, then this would be a uh, filter or system that ha would have a finite impulse response. Okay, And this uh, impulse response is defined in this um, limit here, in this range from 0 to n minus 1. So we have n samples. When we take the Fourier transform of this, in this case, and um, so the Fourier transform would be like this, and we know already the limits, so we go from 0 to n minus 1, and we just plug in the exponential here, which was defined here, but it's defined only in this range, so we, we have already the limits, which are given by this. And we move on with the calculations. We apply the rule that we learned from before. The first uh, part is the this to the power of the lower limit, which is zero, so we get one. And upper limit plus one, which is n minus one plus one, so we have n. Okay, a to the n and z to the minus n because of this minus one here. And 1 minus a, or uh, which is a in this case, the, or alpha if you want. Uh, uh, so now we have to make sense of this. As I was saying before, sometimes instead of having this represented as a power of negative, uh, uh, as a function of negative powers of z, we can represent it as positive powers of z. So I need to get rid of this negative uh, z here, z to the minus n. If I multiply by z to the n, then I get rid of it. But um, so then I have to multiply z to the n up and down, you see. See here, z to the n up and down. Then it's like uh, if I'm uh, multiplying by 1. But again, I will have a z to the uh, minus 1 here, so I need also to get rid of this one. So I need to multiply by z here, up and down again. So in total, I will be multiplying by z to the n plus 1, in total. So I will have, uh, now what happens is the following. Uh, um, when I multiply here, of course, um, this will be... Uh, this will be cancelled and I will have a which you see here but this one here will be multiplied by n and when I account for the plus one that means one more z I put it outside here and um, then uh, up up down here is something similar is, is happening so I uh, this plus one here, this extra z that I multiply, I uh, use it to cancel this one here. So I have z minus a. And the z to the n, I will put it outside. You see, this z to the n here comes here. Okay. So I had an extra z 
that I put here and this is to the end on here so in, uh, when I simplify everything I'll end up with this expression here for the Z transform of this finite sequence I recommend you to go through this and if you have any question you just uh, you have to ask okay now well uh, now we can start asking questions the first one is uh, is this sequence absolutely summable which means is it is it uh, stable well let's see remember the z transform helps us analyze two things stability and uh, and uh, causality so let's see if it's stable in the same way that we can apply uh, so from the z transform the way we defined it up here you see i can imagine that uh for, for stability, I have to simplify and analyze it, uh, analyze the Z-transform instead. Uh, oh, sorry, the, the, I could analyze the Fourier transform instead if I want to. But let's say that if I keep that one and I take the absolute value of it, so I'll have something like this. And I'm saying that uh, I need this absolute value to be less than infinity so that I can have stability. And here, actually, uh, we can uh, evaluate it from the Z-transform itself. And we can say, well, I need this to be less than infinity. That uh, means it would be absolutely uh, summable. But to be less than infinity, what are the conditions that we need to impose here? So, just to s help you see here that actually what we have is absolute value of a divided by absolute value of z right that's what we have there so what what are the conditions uh, first condition is that z cannot be zero because you know we cannot divide by zero so that's one condition so z cannot be zero and the second condition is a cannot be infinity because the only possibilities to get infinity here is uh, are, uh, whether uh, z could be zero so we divide by zero you get infinity or if uh, a is infinity itself so say then the only two conditions to guarantee um, uh, stability is that z cannot be zero and a cannot be infinity if those things are in place so we will have a stable situation okay another thing that we can do here is uh, analyze the poles location of poles and zeros hmm? uh, so for the pole the zeros first we have to find um, uh, the roots of this uh, polynomial here see if I find the roots of that so it would be like um, in principle see would have n roots but then you have to remember how to calculate the, z the roots for a uh, uh, in this complex uh, situation here so actually we will have uh, n uh, roots because the order is, is n when you calculate the roots of a second order polynomial for example if you have uh, x squared minus uh, b if you calculate the find this, the roots of that one you'll get two two roots because you have a second order polynomial here we have nth order so we'll have n n uh, roots and because we are in the complex case uh, the the roots will be um, located around the unit circle i will show you soon in a picture here so the roots are defined like this uh, uh, n roots and um, we will call, call each of them zk so we'll have uh, uh, each of this zk will be the square the, the root the nth root of a to the n which is a and then we'll have them uh, across the unit circle uh, like this so we'll take the unit circle which is uh, an angle of 2 pi we will divide it by n uh, by n 
and then multiply by uh, k when k is zero for zero to n minus one when k is zero okay we have the first root and then oh, and so on so i'll uh, make another drawing here so that you can see it so i will have the unit circle i will have n roots so for k is zero i will have i'm talking about the, the numerator here see so we we'll have one zero here and then i have others uh, for example if i have a fan is four then i will have just like this four zeros if it's eight then i would have more here because i would have to divide by eight see uh, here we are dividing the, the angle two pi which is the whole which is the whole unit circle which is two pi right i'm dividing it by n okay and then i start multiplying by k and the k is varying from uh, zero one and so on so um, when k is zero we are here and when it's be one is this one two three four five six seven okay so we go from uh, 0 to 8 minus 1 which is 7 okay so those are location of the zeros now we look at the poles uh, for the poles here it says n minus 1 poles here but here uh, if i find the roots for this one here they are all located at 0 so those uh, i have poles here and i have n minus one but i have another pole here remember the poles are the roots in the denominator here i, ha I had another pole at z equals a and if i have defined a to be here so if this is the value of a then i would have a pole at the same position there and this I can define to be either outside the unit circle or inside the unit circle. Let's say that I'm imagining that this should be inside the unit circle. And I put the unit circle here. So this is... Uh, this is A. Okay. And this is the unit circle. 1, minus 1 j minus j okay so what happens is that uh, this pole here is cancelling out with that zero so in total we will have uh, we will have in total we will have uh, this number of poles that i have defined uh, previously somewhere uh, so n minus one poles i'll write them down here n minus one poles at z equals zero this is zero okay and n minus one zeros mm. Uh, they are spread at uh, the root value of z equals uh, root value of z equals a so but they are around the unit circle as you can see here so uh, we'll, we'll later on we'll learn how to see the gain for a system like this uh, so the, our next step is to try to understand what's happening here because as you can see i have some zeros here which means that the gain goes down in this region here and it goes well it should go up in the, in this region here but i will finish here because i have a limit of 40 minutes guys uh, this is to topic for chapter 5 okay the next video as i promise is to figure out uh, i mean to show you a few exercises okay the next video then will be about exercises and then we get to chapter 5 so see you next video.